This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Rashomon from 1950, directed by that guy, Akira Kurosawa. You all know him. The tagline from the film, the husband, the wife, or the bandit. And the synopsis of the film from Letterboxd, brimming with action while incisively examining the nature of truth, Rashomon is perhaps the finest film ever to investigate the philosophy of justice. Through an Hmm. ingenious use of camera and flashbacks, Kurosawa reveals the complexities of human nature as four people recount different versions of the story of a man's murder and the rape of his wife. So RJ, and uh, Mm -hmm. maybe even new listeners of the podcast here, coming from Reddit, hi. Uh, This here, this Rashomon... This is like the one of the big enchiladas of the Criterion Collection, I would say. Oh, it's the whole enchilada, baby. Yeah, this is like, you know, uh, I mean, even in like Kurosawa's uh, oeuvre, uh, it's basically second only to Seven Samurai, which mm-hmm. I guess is like, that's the whole ball game of uh, the Criterion Collection, I'd say, mm-hmm. for many. Uh, if probably anyone owns a Criterion, I'd say Seven Samurai is probably amongst them, it seems. Mm-hmm. Uh, It's a go-to. It's a staple. And Rashomon is just somewhere behind it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think only because it's not specifically a samurai movie that maybe it's behind there. But it's probably, like, compared to everything else, too, I think it's his most critically celebrated and with good Mm -hmm. reason. Um, This is the sixth film of Kurosawa's in the collection so far uh, in our creep after Seven Samurai, High and Low, uh, Yojimbo Sanjuro, Hidden Fortress. I think that's it, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Yes. uh, So Rashomon, this movie's pretty (laughs) dope, right? I mean... (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Rashomon's pretty good, man. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty real good. But uh, so I'm just playing my hand there. RJ is admitting it. He's he's on the right page of history here. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not always, I'm not always, and I get a lot of grief for it. There's but, uh, not a lot. It's it's one of those movies that belongs to like a small list, I'd say, where its title is like synonymous with like kind of creating an entire like subgenre of film. Uh, well, like that people would refer to, oh, it's like a Rashomon. <laughs> like it's, well, it, it's yeah. like a cultural thing, right? Like the Rashomon effect. And like, even I was going to say the first time I heard about this was in Simpsons and I didn't even know what it meant. But, like, they're talking about Rashomon, and Homer's just like, I don't remember it like that. Ah. And I was like, ha, funny joke. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but okay. That's a that's well, a, that's a Harvard joke right there. There you go, yeah. But, like, that's kind of like what you're saying. It was it was bigger than just a movie. It uh, it did that, uh, that gold standard where it was, like, breaking through into pop culture almost, getting referenced in The uh, Simpsons and things of this such. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, The Shining or something. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, it's a it's another echelon. I mean, there's movies like, remember Basic starring John Travolta? <laughs> I do remember that movie. Yeah. Yeah, what about it? Uh, yeah, it, it does that. Uh, or say Rules of Engagement, the, mm. the, the monstrous William Friedkin film. <laughs> oh. Yeah, there's like, so, okay. The funny thing about Rashomon that kind mm-hmm. of... Um, gets i don't know it doesn't get talked about at least in anything i've encountered specifically it's a courtroom drama kind of hell yeah like a, th- a full th- maybe not full third but a third of the action is uh a flashback to a courtroom scene that's out in a courtyard um and it's like actually a really kind of beautifully iconic scene in itself where it's just like these people kind of uh talking to a voiceless uh jury or judge uh counsel yeah. And you're, and it's the audience that are asking questions that we can't hear. They're just kind of like mm-hmm. in our mind. And then the person's like, what's that? It's almost like they're at a Q and a, and they're like asking the question out loud. So the listeners at home can hear it. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's like interesting. Cause like people sometimes take a big shit on the courtroom drama and Rashomon is essentially that. Um, and there's like other films, like, uh, like they're kind of in the same ballpark of like, kind of like their courtroom dramas, but they're like the flip side of it. Like something like say 12 angry men. Which is also like, it's like the inverse of that. And it's also kind of the same idea of like good people or people trying to be good and trying to do certain things, but they're also uh, inevitably selfish and Mm -hmm. trying to guide people through those sort of things. That movie kind of came to my mind a few times, that 12 Angry Man watching Rashomon, because I'm uh, fond of both of them. Mm -hmm. So what's this movie all about? Um, It's interesting that, Every time I read about this movie, it, it changes. Like when people refer to it, saying that it's about it's three stories 
uh, that are told telling the mm-hmm. same thing. And in fact, it's more than that, right? There's like yeah, three, I think four, I... five, six, six versions of the same story or mm-hmm. event kind of told. Um, for initially, we get the woodcutter who tells mm-hmm. what he initially claims to be what he saw, which was uh, footage of him uh, walking mm-hmm. through the woods. Very, be- very uh, beautiful, sh- uh, beautifully shot woods, and uh, he comes across mm-hmm. uh, some evidence of something happening, some mm-hmm. women's clothing and whatnot, and then he finds a dead body with some hands coming out of a bush. The zombie hands. Yep. It's so cool. Yep. Yeah. And then we get a uh, uh, the, the next testimony we get is a dude uh, who kidnapped or not kidnapped. He uh, stumbled upon and arrested uh, citizen style. Uh, mm-hmm. Dirty Mafune, as I will, uh, uh, as I'll call him. <laughs> well, Toshiro himself. Yeah, Toshiro. yeah, I notice he's pretty dirty. He's always like scratching his neck, yeah. and crouching, and it uh, it's always in the roles where he's like these bandits or scoundrels, and I love it because mm-hmm. he's so fun, and it's like you would be scratchy because you'd be dirty and stinky. Yeah, you got all those lices and stuff, all those bugs. Yeah, yeah. So. We get that version. You don't even get that version. You get the what happened, what this guy says. He seems to be very mm-hmm. proud of the fact uh, that he's, like, caught this guy. He feels good about himself. Probably get a little bit of that reward money, getting this, this bandit piece of shit off the streets, you know, mm-hmm. getting him hung, whatever happens to him. Which, does the film actually ever say what happens to him in this film? Mm-hmm. No, you're not given any like. Yeah, um, see, again, it's an interesting thing because I wasn't mm-hmm. even thinking about that until I was writing my notes, and I was like, "What happens to him?" And it's not important. <laughs> yeah, well, there's there's no resolution to him or the wife, right? Like you're not seeing the verdicts of what they are because ultimately it doesn't matter as much. It's more about how the story resonates with the other people, right? Like the people who heard it, because I think that's what the ending is about. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you keep going. So then is it next then that we get the bandit story, uh, Tajumaru, um, or do we get the wife? One way or another. Uh, it goes It goes bandit, wife, okay. uh, and then, and then samurai. The ghost story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we got a Mifune story. And yep. uh, we get him laying out things. And, uh, I mean, again, we don't know where this movie's going the first time you're watching it. This is probably mm-hmm. my... Third or four, at least third or fourth time, maybe fifth time watching this movie. Uh, I think probably maybe it might actually be the first time I've watched it on Blu ray, though. Um, and yeah, you get the depiction of him being the reckless maniac who gets the best of a samurai, gets the lady, and uh, he was totally in control of the situation the whole time because he's crazy, mm-hmm. he doesn't give a shit. Um, and we get like the layout of that, and then we get uh, the wife story, mm-hmm. uh, where she, of course. Paints Masako paints herself uh, as uh, hapless in all these events and like mm-hmm. doing what is required from, uh, from a hapless victim stance and how how she wound up in the position that she's in now complicit complicit but at the same time uh, out of things were out of hand but like there's a certain amount of guilt and shame involved mm-hmm. uh, and then we get the ghost story of the the dead husband samurai. Uh, yeah. of uh, Takshiro and he uh, he lays it out via a medium in some mm-hmm. real uh, creeptober spookiness um, through a growly spooky voice that's done over top and uh, we get to find out that everyone's kind of like full of shit and uh, yeah and of course you're now left with uh, these questions because the whole framing device of this uh, kind of anthology almost of uh, we have this Buddhist monk who's kind mm-hmm. of like in this root in this like half burnt out temple called Rashomon, uh, kind of like reflecting on this entire courtroom drama that's like happened recently that he's like kind of watched over, uh, along with the woodsman just to see how the story transpires. And the fact that like everyone's full of crap and everything's mm-hmm. horrible. Uh, this temple is like half destroyed, but it's half still usable, half salvageable. I don't know if it's kind of like an, a heavy handed, uh, yin and yang, uh, light and dark sort of thing. Uh, it's, I, I don't. I don't think it comes off too. Like, no, it's not at all. I, I, not at all. It, it, in fact, yeah. it's like it's just like this beautiful iconic shot. Uh, but I mean, you could uh, pull something out of it, I suppose, if you wanted to go down that road. Um, and then what happens is we 
this is all kind of being told back to, I guess, who I refer to here as the the common man. Uh, mm-hmm. This, like, shirtless dude who just wants to get out of the rain, and he doesn't give a shit about anything. And he and he, mm-hmm. he, he keeps it real. He is a... Uh, he is... Uh-huh. He, he is... <laughs> He is democracy at work. He just like strips it down. He's a straight shooter. Mm. That guy is so awesome. Like he he talks so plain. Where he's just like, I don't give a shit. And it's like, yeah, but it's so horrible. And he's like, so who cares? Yeah. Like, uh, it's just like <laughs> and he yeah, laughs. Yeah, he's always laughing. And they're like, a man was murdered, and he's like, just one. So what? He's like, one death doesn't really matter. He's like, look at all these disasters. Look at all these horrible things. He's like, what is one man? Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, shit. This guy's talking some hard truth here. Yeah, do as you're going to do, baby. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, then this all kind of doubles back because he is the one who calls the woodsman out because he's like, well, what, hap- what happened to that nice uh, blade that was like with the pearl handle? What <laughs> happened to that, buddy? Old mm-hmm. woods cutter, woodsman, if that's your real name. And then we get the uh, the remastered cut of uh, events. The the woodsman tells all as he saw it all, as he just watched on. And, the uh, woodsman? Real- the woodsman. All I can think of is that Kevin Bacon movie <laughs> when you say that. Yeah. Keep, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, then you find out, everyone's garbage uh everyone and everything they're all cowardly and like i love the like kind of at the escalation of the sword fight that we see earlier on where it's like the, the in the samurai story it's like he was put upon and like he wouldn't even get he didn't even get killed he killed himself because he's just mm-hmm. like he's that committed and mifune is just like this expert like bandit who like killed the samurai beat him fair and square and then you find out from at least the, at least one perspective, they just were like exactly what you'd expect in like reality and not like in a maybe a Kurosawa samurai movie. It was just mm-hmm. like guys desperately flailing around in the dirt. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, they, like they're like completely clueless because in combat, it's like realistically, this is actually mm-hmm. what would probably happen. It would be like so frightening. The fact that like any second you're going to die, maybe unless you can get mm-hmm. the best of the other guy. It's a horrible thing. Um and then, I mean, also, you have this whole thing of this backdrop of, this is also, like, a movie about, like, a, a rape. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like... Yeah, not- it really gets brushed aside, though. It's like, uh, let's not talk about the rape. Let's talk about what happened after the rape. Yeah, okay. well, because there's, like, various degrees of, like, uh, it was, like against her will but then she got into it and then there, then she did it to save her husband and another time where she mm-hmm. she like she she kind of like was against it but then she kind of got into it and like the the eyes of her husband just judging her and making her feel mm-hmm. even more horrible like you know all these different perspectives of these things mm-hmm. um but yeah uh i will say that there is the 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 a- japanese attitude toward women and raping this that uh it seems consistent with a, a lot of uh, Japanese attitudes toward rape uh, in their anime films. Their uh, their crazy things, and like just sure. like in some things where it's sure. like J- Japan never really had their uh, feminist revolution, and this movie was before that would have happened in 1950. But there's definitely some like I could see someone being a bit put off and uncomfortable by it, mm-hmm. um, despite it being kind of like this is like a beautiful rendering of this story. It's so well shot. Uh, I mean, there's like a ton written about like just like the all the technical experimentation that was going on with like going back mm-hmm. between these figures in that grove um but yeah and then you get to the ending of this movie which i think is like super powerful for me uh i love the ending yeah. of this i love the payoff of it it's mm-hmm. uh elegant uh and like really it's just the the fight goes on and uh yeah you might be garbage but be better be better yeah that seems to kind of be that's all you can be that's all you can try to be but uh Mm -hmm. hey rj i've I've talked Mm. for a bit here what what did you think of this rashomon uh rashomon uh well as i teased a little bit uh i'm big into this movie jared uh this is one that uh i won't be on the wrong side of history for as you stated uh i'm big time rashomon rashomon that's that'll be my moniker for a while, Rational Man. Um, I love this movie. I think it's super good. Uh, this is one that I actually own and I've seen before. Such a rare thing in uh, this Criterion Creeps uh, project that we've started. This Pygmalion project with me <laughs> and my education in uh, into film. We still have uh, to so, work on that accent. No, it's uh, it's part of the charm. It's uh, the Fubar thing. 
um, that's what Andrew was saying. Uh, like when we were in the States a while ago, she's like, you went full foobar for like an entire night, like out of nowhere, just calling everyone bud and talking about going out for a rip, just going out for a rip, a bud. It's like, I don't know where it came from. I don't think I talk like that normally. doesn't matter here nor there. Rashomon. Uh, Rashomon. Uh, I think this movie is wicked good. Uh, I am always usually on the side of our boy, Akira Kurosawa. Uh, you usually, you're a little bit of a, um, a fence sitter, I think, with him on some of them. Uh, you, you, you like him, right? But yeah, I like just, him, but I find that I'm not a f- much a fan of his samurai stuff. I like High right, and Low so is awesome. Is. Rashomon's yep. awesome. Seven Samurai, I think, is like good. Like it's good, right? But I don't, I don't think mm-hmm. it's the like all time classic that everyone else does. I, I'm, I yep. know I'm definitely a, a minority view on that one. But yep. Which it's funny, you never get shit on for that. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, I'm glad that you like Rashomon also. So what I was saying before is I like it for a lot of the same reasons that you do. There's certain elements built into the structure of the movie that uh, I love. Like I talk about all the time uh, nonlinear storytelling, that artisan film craft there, uh, that technique that they use. And I think I think it's at play in this movie a lot where this is where it's like the story within the story within another story that uh, I really, I really love. It's the same reason why I like um, certain horror anthologies where it's like people telling stories, but the connective tissue, like the backdrop story is also this part of a bigger story. It's neat. I like when, when you do that thing and you kind of connect it better or connect it a little bit more. And I think Rashomon is, I don't know. It's one of the first examples I can think of uh, for doing that. Um, and they do it really well, too. Like what you were saying with uh, um, the actual like court scenes, uh, you never see the judges or anything like that. And I think it's so effective in giving the audience like an interactive part of the movie almost. Uh, it works for engagement. Like it really kind of pulls you in because it's a little bit different um, than things are usually. And it's not like shitty fourth wall breaking where it's like a wink at you like through the camera it's like huh uh it's not anything like that um but yeah so i i really like the structure uh of this movie i also think that this thing uh lays down some heavy themes and big grand ideas um in really subtle ways but they talk they they present them in subtle ways but there's a real complexity to the things that they're kind of talking about. Uh, so one thing I love is when you look at all of these stories from the different ones, they're all kind of representative of this different thing. Like with the bandit, he's kind of about power and uh, pride almost, like power, honor, because he's building himself up as this big thing. But he was also really honorable at the end and he was like we'll have a duel because i respect you like power and respect you have the woman who is in this like unfortunate situation of shame and pride at the same time they all have pride in theirs i guess Mm -hmm. but she has this shame and uh like this thing where it's like what do you do then when she's in such a raw situation where it's like well i'm with my husband but this guy raped me and now my husband doesn't want me and neither does this guy. And what do I do now? So you have like her story and then you have the husband's too, which is like pride and cowardice at the same time a little bit. Um, so I like how they each kind of represent this different thing. And then they use those bigger ideas to kind of tell smaller um, or to dig in, like um, explore some smaller ideas a little bit like selfishness. Uh, good deeds, um, inevitability, faith, sin, uh, evil, and then like ultimately uh, subjective truth and perspective, which is what this movie is all about, right? Like which truth is the real one? Um, And it's all about a matter of perspective and uh, it's all subjective to these people. But does does it ask who are the real cannibals? (laughs) Are we the real monsters? Uh, in a way, I guess, but uh, not in a, a well, real I, shitty, I think, dumb way. Yeah, I think it expl- I mean, this movie is like dreary and depressing, which is kind of a refreshing because I mean, it has like I mean, the ending is like kind of like 
the the redemption, I guess, or kind of like the big thing of like the the big ray of hope, uh, mm-hmm. because the movie begins with like that. I don't know. It, as soon as I saw the temple stuff, the rain, I'm like, oh right, I remember like so much of this movie already. Like, because like it's been a while since I'd seen it, but just like seeing that, I'm like, right, this movie, this movie's got so much good going for it. Yeah. Well, but, that's what I. You know. Sorry, we, did you have more? No, uh, yeah, I was just saying like yeah the. Uh, the way it kind of has these themes. I mean, you, you, yeah. it's debatable whether or not they're. I don't know if I'd say they're necessarily subtle. I mean, the, the all the some doc, of them all are. the all the conversations between like the the priest, the 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 woodsman, and the the common man, the commoner. Um, mm-hmm. Like they're all like. I mean, they're all very. They're, they're big philosophical Direct. debates uh, mm-hmm. going on. But and because uh, the one thing I forgot to mention with this movie too is like it is so qu- like quotable. Like in the like mm-hmm. way that you screen cap. Uh, images with the subtitles underneath them, which is a great thing about watching these things with English subtitles and not being a native speaker, um, mm-hmm. is you get to like get all these like great juxtapositions of lines of dialogue with these people's faces, and you're just like, ah, oh, that's so good. <laughs> so yep. uh, I guess like you can drop those anywhere, and they're great to look at. Yeah, it does have great stuff like that too, and I think this is a good a good show on uh, like the Criterion or whoever whoever did the original work on like the subtitle stuff because there's sometimes with the subtitles it's well you'll read it and you're like I don't know if that's what they meant like there's that there's that disconnect between the actual language and uh, when there's like certain words that can't be translated or represented in a different language this one's really good where everything that they say you're just like fuck like, that's some serious shit right there and it, it makes sense in English too uh, but yeah it's like I, I know what you mean. It's not like this subtle thing. Well, especially or, like when like, there's those scenes like where the uh, the priest is saying, this is the most horrible thing I've seen, like yeah. <laughs> plagues yeah. No. and famine and death, but this is the one that really did me in. And I'm kind of like, is is this the worst one? Like, because I mean, uh, whatever. It's not, it's, this is like yeah. picky, but I'm like, eh, this, is, this is like pretty common probably for the era. Like this, yep. this sort of uh, idea and like the fact that like I mean if you were like raised in a monastery and like cut off from the world and lost in your own self exploration and stuff like that and then you're like god how can I even trust my own mind if I like I never thought about the fact that people lie and it's like it's very it's kind of on the naive side a little bit it is it is yeah um, it's a I think the, the reason I'm okay with that is because yeah. I think it's I think they do it in a way where they don't present it as like that you are naive and that you are dumb. And mm-hmm. it's, which I think is a little bit of a difference where there's a lot of movies that you watch and it's like, no, you're a dumb, dumb. Let me lay this out for you. Right. And I don't think they do it as much that way, but yeah, yeah I know. I, I, I see what you mean. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I do really like the, the common guy that they tell the story to because he's like this, he's like this, uh, realist. He's a realist, but he's like, you know, those, what are those things that you ding and they, uh, they like vibrate? Do you like, know what I mean? Like a gong? Something rod? No, one of those rods. <laughs> I, what tuning I was trying fork? to say. Yeah, he, yeah, he's like a tuning fork. That doesn't even fucking make sense. What am I talking about? He's like, <laughs> he's like this representation of the culture as a whole and like of people. And he's just like, where everything they say, they're like, oh, this was so bad. And he's like, yeah, it's bad everywhere. It's like, what do you want? It's like everything sucks. Everybody is bad. All well, things are well, shit. Yeah, he's like the justification of everything. Like everything can be justified. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like he's got a rationale for everything. He's like, yeah, yeah, of course those things happen because of this, and of course that so because what? Of this. <laughs> so what? Who gives a shit? He's like, I'm gonna steal this baby's kimono, whatever. But uh, that's what I was. I mean, to is I think they set that up really well. And I think the ending is so effective because of that, where you have you have a guy like that, and then you have the the woodsman Kevin Bacon, and he's like in this situation where he's broken down by this thing, but even in in such a dire thing, he's like, you know what, I'll just take this baby, I'm just gonna run with it. I've got Try six to kids the... already. What's yeah, another he, one? He's like, my life is already a little bit uh, tough. No big deal. Um, I'll try. Is that guy in Seven Samurai, the woodsman? Oh yeah, yeah. That's... yeah he's the, is he one of the main Sams? Oh, yeah, he's like I uh, think right? he's a uh, a Kiru. Uh, that's what he I. Is, he's like the oh, face. He's, okay. he's, yeah, yeah. He's like in all the Kurosawa stuff. He's like one of his same uh, as Toshiro Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I was like, I was like, I can't remember. He's got a wicked ass hat though. It's got like that little pony dumpling thing on top. Uh, I like that. 
a lot. Um, but yeah, so I think Rashomon is great because of those two big things, really. Like the structure of the movie, I think, is uh, so well done. And then I, I do like the exploration of certain themes, even if sometimes they're a little heavy handed when he's like a bandit calling another bandit. It's like it's like that Spider-Man meme where it's two Spider-Mans pointing at each other. And it's like, no, you it's like that kind of thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, I think that those are the reasons why it's great. But there's a lot of other stuff that I really like about this movie as well. Uh, one thing that I love and uh, so Andy watches with me last night and I wasn't mm-hmm. sure how how it was going to go. Uh, she didn't want to watch it. I was like, I got to watch Criterion tonight. And uh, she's like, oh, uh, what is it? I was like, it's a Japanese movie. And she's like, uh, and she's like, mm. and I was like, from the 50s. She's like, uh. so I don't want to watch that. I was like, no, it's really good. I promise. So she watched and I wasn't sure how uh, the ghost would have played with her because I was like, that might lose her on this. Um, but she was on board with it. And uh, I think that shows one of the things that I think they do really well in this movie is they play it so straight and it's just like Japanese, like J horror stuff. They play the concept so straight that it's believable. I think because they present the like the shaman or a medium that like, uh, takes in the voice of the dead man and it's not really questioned. It's just kind of like accepted. It's like, yeah, it's like, we all believe it that it happened. So I think that is so effective because it makes it kind of genuine where you're like, yeah, this is, it's like, they believe it. So why shouldn't we? No. Let's just trust it. Let's just trust this medium woman. I also really like the effect where it's like his voice coming out of her. Yep. I was like, yeah, I love that ghost shit. <laughs> I love that ghost shit, Jarrett. That's uh, my review of uh, Rashomon. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, when I was watching that, all I could think about, I was like, because we talk about this all the time. Uh, this is uh, a J, one of your ideas. But I was like, I wonder what would happen if Blumhouse remade Rashomon and the ghost like just Skyped into his defense instead of being like brought in by a medium. Because it's like, can you imagine people trying to remake this and then presenting that thing in a different way? It's like, it's like, well, we can't just do that. We got to make it hip. <laughs> itchy. It's like, let's, let's bring, let's bring the ghost back through Skype. Like something really shitty like that. Yeah, as you do. Uh, speaking of remakes, uh, RJ, were you aware there was an American Western remake of Rashomon? Uh, I am. I was not. Uh, it's called The Outrage. Came out in 1964. Hmm. I did not watch it this week. I have seen it, uh, it was a couple of years ago because yeah. this movie, uh, The Priest. Uh, is played by William Shatner, and I was on a oh. and I was on a William Shatner kick. Is that uh, that movie that's in Esperanto? No, that would be Incubus, which is awesome. Oh, okay. Uh, no, this is uh, this has got Paul Newman, and is, uh, <laughs> I gotta interrupt you. Is that why I wanted the Incubus? Was because I thought it was the William Shatner Esperanto movie? Probably. So like, okay, people. This is two weeks ago preamble stuff, but. It was a big one, all right? Yeah. I think I finally figured it out. I'm yeah. having a revelation yeah, here. Cr- yeah, crack the case. Jesus. So, uh, yeah, the outrage. The outrage. Uh, it's not It's not good. It's uh, very, like, it's. what do you expect? It has, like, the same thing where it's, like, they're in some, like, a train station waiting for the train, and it's, like, half burnt out, and the rain's pouring, and they're, like, I can't believe this happened. And they, it's, like, the exact same stuff, but it's, like, Paul Newman- um and uh oh I can't Juan name. Carrasco yeah so he's playing a Mexican <laughs> uh actually or is it the other way around I think it's the other way around oh no he is the yeah he's right he's yeah. playing the uh the whatever the, the half breed or half Mexican guy whatever you want to call him Lawrence Harvey Claire Bloom Edward G Robinson as the mm. con man William Shatner as preacher and oh Howard da Silva as the prospector um. Yeah, this movie, uh, when did I watch this bad boy? Martin Ritt directed it, so he's, like, not the worst or anything. Yeah, it was uh, two years ago. And, like hmm. I said, I just remember watching it at the time. It's just, uh, as far as a Western goes, it's pretty flat. And there's, like, this kind of little tradition of uh, Westerns being uh, remakes of these Japanese Kurosawa movies. Mm-hmm. Because they are very Western-y. Uh, with yeah. Seven Samurai, we got Magnificent Seven. And from Yojimbo and Sanjuro, we get kind of the... Uh, uh, few dollars more stuff like that fistful mm-hmm. of dollars and stuff like that um anyway 
So yeah, so, that, that was a that was a failure, and it kind of shows it's like it's not necessarily like this thing translates exactly greatly. Uh, just because if you yeah. take the framework, it's like no, you have to actually bring something to the table and uh, yep. bring some of that uh, artisanal film craft to it. You know, uh, you know fresh what I'm saying? Baked. Yeah, I do know what you're saying. Yeah, uh, uh, I have a, a lot to uh, say off of that actually. So, if not for Creeptober, I probably would have watched this thing just for uh, due diligence sake. But I think it's really funny that. Um, uh, Paul Newman is playing a Mexican in that because one thing watching with Andrea that she noticed she was like for the the husband she's like that guy's not Japanese <laughs> I was like I'm pretty sure he is she's like no he's not he, he's like she, he can't be Japanese I was like what do you mean she's like that dude is Mexican I was like what and she she pulled up a Whoa. picture of a uh, from uh, Napoleon Dynamite of Pedro, and she was and uh, she took a screenshot of the guy who plays the husband and Pedro, and she's like, "That's the same fucking guy." Uh, and it is actually, I gotta tell you, Jared, it's pretty compelling. There are some striking similarities in their characteristics. Yeah, I, so, I will say, uh, uh, there is some talk of land bridges. In, in, oh. the, in, the, in the long time ago, where people I'm would sure. have where people would have migrated down the the yep. west coast of America and found themselves down in Mexico, so there's probably uh, some. I think there's a lot of facial similarities between human humanities and humans. Yeah, so I'm sure that there's a logical explanation, but uh, it is funny because that guy actually does look like Pedro from mm-hmm. Napoleon Dime. I'll put it on our Instagram okay. uh, this week so people can see. Yeah, they can judge for themselves. <laughs> people this, can this, judge for this, themselves. This is big. Hey, you know what? Speaking of actors, uh, what? so amongst like many things that this film's like successful at, like the subtlety um, – of the performances of the actors because yeah. they, they, they have to like work like triple time because they have to take each of these character mm. roles and they figure things out, but they have to play it differently each time, different each, set. Like, each time, each time it plays out. Like, so they have to do everything a little bit differently. So that it's really exciting. Cause it's like, they actually do a really good job. Um, yes. I, I think, uh, to, to, again, to my, all non, do my good, non-native eyes yeah. uh, looking at this, it's like, I think they do a great job. Mufune is Mufune. I guess it was, mm-hmm. what was his birthday or something like that yesterday? Yeah, it was. Fuck, we should have got this episode out two days ago. Got we him blew a, it again. Got him a cake. Yeah. Um, no, they all do a really good job where the best way I could describe it is they all have their, uh, they all have their run at uh, Kabuki Theater where each one of them gets to play like the over exaggerated uh, version of it. Uh, that was one thing that took Andrea back. She's like, what's going on? She's like, why are these people laughing so hard? I was like, uh, I was like, I don't really know, but here's my guess. I was like, you ever heard of Kabuki theater? And she's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I'm just making shit up. Um, but yeah, they all do a really good job. Um, so I was going to say uh, there are some other stuff that uh, other things I really like about this movie. Uh, how about that fucking shot of the horizon? John Ford would have been so happy with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when uh, Tashiro Mifune is talking about riding his horse and it shows that shot. Oh, of him yeah, yeah, yeah. The horse with the sunset. Isn't that what John Ford always said? Like, where's the horizon? Oh, yeah. yeah. As, for, as his tips he gave, I think, I think it was like to Spielberg. Spielberg, where's the horizon? Yeah, uh, that shot is amazing. I love it. Um, but he's right, damn it, John Ford. He is right, yeah. Uh, a few little quotes here, Jared. I'll throw it to you that I thought were so funny. Uh, when Toshiro Mufune is talking about, he's like, You think I fell off my horse? He's like, I just uh, I ate some bad, I ate some bad stuff, uh, and I had a stomach ache. So uh, I just got off by choice because my tummy hurt. Uh, I think that is so funny for him to like rash justified the things where he's like you think he's like you think i was you think i couldn't ride my horse man i had a tummy ache like what's your deal uh i think that is awesome i really like when the everyday man uh he's talking like because they're talking about whose story to believe and he says i don't care if it's a lie uh if it's interesting um (laughs) and i was like hey he's just talking about like fiction man uh he gets it he's like stories don't have to be true to be fun not like important stories, but uh, you know what I mean. Um, what else we got here? Uh, this movie uh, really hammers on uh, quote, beware the woman's story. Oh boy, yeah. end quote. Uh-huh. And uh, it's there yeah. are cold as ice uh, uh-huh. when Boos quotes here, yeah, you've been with two men, kill yourself. Yep, uh, <laughs> this is the first time in a while we've got a kill yourself on the criterion collection, <laughs> but uh, it does come. 
Well, we, we don't forget, women use their tears to fool everyone. They even fool themselves. Uh, just, can't trust a woman's no, story. A man here. has to make a woman his by his sword. Mm-hmm. All things to live by. And, uh, you know, maybe we should go, go back to old heritage, right? <laughs> Nobody cares about the Me Too stuff. I heard that new Halloween movie is all about Me Too. Oh. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find, we'll find out. out. Uh, so anyways, I like that stuff. Uh, they're pretty harsh on women, um, which bummer, but I guess it's 1950. So whatever. What are we going to do about it? Uh, and then uh, the one thing I love is how much uh, these guys are like such pathetic losers that they always try. All of them were trying to save face on uh, the way they told the story. And then, like you were saying, the fight scene, they're so bad at fighting. I love it. Like yeah. w- when you get all their versions of the story and then you go to that story and they're just they don't know what to do they're so like taken aback they're like i've never actually fought somebody uh i like uh tashiro yeah. mifune's strategy of throwing the sword uh he pulls that one off twice even for the the kill stroke he just throws his sword at the guy um which i think is awesome it's a good technique so uh yeah i don't know i um i dig this movie jerry i think rashomon is very nice uh or at voice very nice uh and uh i'm glad we got to watch it one day i'm glad it's so early in the criterion yeah yeah it is good we yeah, gotta we gotta we get a good run they're... actually i was gonna say uh sorry i cut you off here but um i think this could even be a du- could have been a double header uh with next week's wild strawberries because of themes of like memory and perspective and all that jazz but uh We'll get there. We we can't do Kurosawa and Bergman in the same episode. Yeah, that would be insane. That would be outrageous. Outrageous. But yeah, Rashomon's uh, the real deal, I would say. Yeah. Well, you know what, RJ? Uh, oh, th- there oh. it's we come to the sad part of our uh, our weekly podcast. Don't who, do it. Who hates Rashomon? Courtesy mm-hmm. of Letterboxd. Um, well, first of all, we got one star here from Sophie Kobo who writes, possibly the most sexist film I've ever seen, as well as a terrifyingly backwards victim-blaming toxic depiction of rape. It seems to have been made with no knowledge of what it means to be sexually assaulted, and the depiction of women in it is wildly shocking. If you must watch it, I urge you to watch uh, Ida Lupino's Outrage, uh, made the same year, which portrays a woman's realistic struggle with the aftermath of rape. Uh, I... Fair point. Uh, I've I've actually seen uh, Lupino's Outrage as well, and is it yeah, good? it is good. Uh, she, uh, I did Lupino movies. She only made a few films, uh, but she was like, yeah. I mean, for a Latino uh, woman making directing her own movies in like mm-hmm. 1950s Hollywood and stuff like that, she she made some movies tackling hard edge film noiry stuff. Uh, they were hmm. absolutely worth watching. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to pick at this comment too much because, like I said it myself, there's definitely things you're like, ooh, boy, I could definitely see this taking somebody out of the movie. Um, yeah, I agree with Sophie Kobo. That's uh, some pretty genuine stuff. Uh, she's got some good taste. Just gave Red Shoes four stars. I think it's higher than that, but that's okay. Pan's Labyrinth. Um, Howl's Moving Castle. That's a weird favorite movie. Uh, in her favorite movies, though, or five star affairs, it's a lot of Star Wars, and uh, Rogue One has five stars, which I find mm. upsetting. Yeah, not not so but, much. But uh, all the other choices are not bad. I I can understand uh, this uh, lady's sympathies yeah. here for this one. So. It's uh, I definitely say that's uh, for a modern viewer coming to this movie now too. Uh, it's yeah. I can definitely see it being a stumbling block. Um, yep. Oscar Harding, one star, has a preamble about doing 31 movies in 31 days. This was film 28 of 31. I'm sorry, but I did not enjoy any element of this film apart from a few beautiful songs. Uh, it's not a bad-looking film. That's all it's got, got going for it. Despite being less than 90 minutes long, it was boring and hard to follow. Poor performances all around. Tashira Mufune mm. was particularly insufferable, and uh, Machiko Kyo was absolutely unbearable. There is a way to overreact and do it well, but it was not present in Rashomon. Hmm. So Oscar Hardinger yeah. has some five-star picks that I think you would probably be on board with. Kill List is one of them. Mm. Uh, Lasagna Cat 
telephone sex survey results is another one. However, Jarrett, there are a lot of Kevin Smith movies, also five stars, which I don't think you would like. Uh, There is also um, some Avengers movies, but here's the big one. Uh, Oscar Harding just gave Mandy five stars. Mm. So I think that'll tell you what you need to know. I still haven't seen that, but uh, just based on your interpretation, I'll go off of that. So Fair enough. Mm. Sergio Fernandez, one star. I did not like the movie. I think it was boring. <laughs> not organized and with a bad plot. I love what? classical cinema, but I hated the film. I recommend it uh, because it's one important movie in cinema's history, but if you want to watch it for fun, I don't recommend it. Um... I'm a little bit thrown off why they don't think it's put together right. Uh, Their favorite movies include Singing in the Rain, Rear Window, Casablanca, and get this, Jarrett, La La Land. Whoa. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. What do we got here? One and a half star from Eli. I get we're supposed to hold this up as an undisputed classic, but the the subject matter... Mm -hmm. It's literally an hour and a half multi-perspective take on the aftermath of a rape. None of them particularly tasteful. Hmm. What is tasteful uh, aftermath rape? I don't know. I would I would ask. No. Um, Eli, it's a little out there. He gave uh, Pacific Rim five stars, Black Panther five stars, uh, Thirty Days a Night five stars, Princess. Um, Diaries, five stars. A Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. That's not a five-star movie. Get out of here. Ooh, Sister Act, though. They got one, but I feel like Sister Act's on here ironically. Hey, this person gave Howl's Moving Castle five stars, too. Huh. You know, it's all these weird trends we see in uh, people who hate one movie. They all love this other random movie that's not connected in any way. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Um, I'm just kind of skimming. Uh, there's the one film critic, uh, Mike D'Angelo, I've mentioned before. Oh, here. God. <laughs> uh, he, he gave Rashomon two and a half stars, refers to himself Come as on. a blasphemer, and breaks the movie down. Um, I think he has some issues with the thought behind the whole concept of the movie as far as like the philosophical mm-hmm. stuff. And also mentions the uh, the horrific attitude toward women the film displays, which uh, yeah. it's hard to uh, get avoid. But there's also some mention here about uh, there's a some YouTube video called Rashomon Mystery Solved Video, which I mm-hmm. guess uh, gets into what really happened using all the edits or something like that. And people say it's quite good. I have not seen it, so I'm not going to go out on a branch there and say, watch it, folks. But mm-hmm. it exists. Uh, yeah. It is definitely not a film. Uh, that element definitely kind of, uh, if that is a thing that you do not want to see in a movie, well, this movie's got it. But nope. uh, despite that, I guess, uh, yeah, the, the, this ending of this movie gets me. Uh, I, I think it's mm-hmm. great. Uh, and technically, this movie's wonderful uh, to look at. And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. Like I, I think it's a... It's one of those great movies in the Criterion Collection. Uh, We'll see in time, though, uh, in this political moment, when when people watch it uh, nowadays, Mm. if uh, people might have a different attitude. It's kind of like watching movies in a post-walkabout world. Post-walkabout world. Yeah. What the hell do you mean by that? People can go back and listen to our walkabout episode. You know what? That's fine, because... That's a movie. That was the first time I shit all over a movie and just explained how bad it is and I hate it. But you know what? I think that's like our least. What is that? One of our least listened to episodes ever. No so one cares about Walkabout. It's nobody's favorite movie. Yeah. Uh, so it's fine. Uh, but oh, I talk about Salo and everyone fucking unloads on me. <laughs> some kind of fucking animal. Yeah. Another another sucks. classic uh, episode to listen to, folks. One of our best. Uh, Very best. That one doesn't need any more. Uh, that one doesn't need any more acclaim. You know what people should listen to? Uh, go listen to like the Red Shoes, or Charade, or Autumn Sonata. Those underrated movies that uh, everyone forgets about. Brief Encounter. Remember that one? That was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, any last thoughts? Uh no. Rosho Monster? That'd be a cool movie. Mm-hmm. Like an anime, Rosho Monster. Mm-hmm. You want to make that with me? <laughs> After the break, 
Uh, so no? Three men find a baby. And then they make three men and a baby. That's that's the end of the movie. You missed it. Oh, I didn't see Tom Selleck anywhere in this thing. You have to look closer. God damn it! I didn't know he was Japanese. Oh, he's Mexican. He's like Pedro. Yeah, isn't he he like Mister Baseball or something? Who Tom Selleck or Pedro? I don't know. I don't even know anymore. What are you talking about, dude? 